By the end of this video, you will be a master of the international men's dress sock market. Your friends will admire you and your enemies will kneel before you as you impress upon them your obscure, worldly, and sophisticated knowledge of men's hosiery. Let's begin. What are the primary qualities you want to look for in a dress sock? First, you want it to be over the calf, which will ensure that no matter what pants you're wearing or how you're seated, no amount of pant leg calf riding will result in showing bare skin below the waist. It will also ensure that your socks do not sag throughout the day, resulting in unsightly rumples around your ankle and you constantly bending over to adjust them. If you have not worn over the calf socks before, it will feel a little weird at first, but trust me, you will adapt and it will change your life. Second, construction. There are four things here. Number one, the thinner the better. Thinner dress socks are harder to manufacture and therefore an indication of quality. They will be cooler and have a more refined aesthetic than thick socks, but more importantly, they won't compromise the fit of your dress shoes. Properly fitted dress shoes will be snug to your feet and therefore thick dress socks can result in tightness, bulging, and blistering. Number two, you want an elastic collar to be at the top of your sock. This is called a cuff and will prevent your sock from slipping down by gripping the top of your calf. It should be at least one inch tall. You don't want a thin little strip. Three, needle count or gauge. This refers to a sock's stitch density. A higher gauge weave will result in a thinner sock with silkier texture and more crisp patterning. You want a gauge of at least 176, ideally 200 or more. Fourth and finally, do you see this? This little ridge here on this sock? It's not a huge deal, but you don't really want this. It'll rub against your toe and just feel kind of weird. What you want is this. The seam is perfectly flush and you won't even notice it. In Italian, this is called Remaglio. How do you identify on a store page whether you're about to buy this sock or this sock? Well. That's where things get a little bit tricky. You see, when socks are made, they come off the primary sewing machine as a tube. One end of this tube must be sewn together to form the toe. This process is called linking. Not too long ago, there were only two ways of doing this. One was machine linking, which was fast, automated, and resulted in this, and hand linking, which was slow and required a skilled laborer to manually thread the sock on a different machine by hand. But this hand linking was the only way to get a flush toe seam. If you were shopping, it was very easy to identify because the key word you would look for is hand linking. However, there have been developments in the men's dress sock construction space. Recently, there have been fully automated machines created that can produce a flush toe seam of equal or superior quality to hand linking without slowing down production. Unlike the previous generation of machines, these can automatically perform that specific function of threading each stitch of the sock to a needle. This has resulted in hand linking slowly phasing out. These machines are referred to by their brand and there's multiple brands, so there's no real contiguous term used anymore across sock companies to identify a flush toe seam. So what do you do when shopping? You want to look for keywords such as luxurious link toe, seamless toe, smooth toe seam. These will all mean the same thing, which is that the sock is constructed with a flush toe seam. If there's no mention of linking or toe seam, it's probably going to have that ridge. That's construction. The third consideration when buying socks is material. Because of both the thinness of dress socks and the occasions on which you wear them, differences in material won't be terribly noticeable. In general though, merino wool is known for being moisture wicking and good for those particularly prone to sweating. It will naturally, however, be a little thicker, warmer, and lint attractive. Cotton will be thinner, cooler, and easier to maintain, although it will be slightly less durable. Cotton also tends to be smoother than wool, which has a distinct hairy quality to it. This means patterns on cotton socks pop a bit more, where on wool, the fuzziness of the material tends to blur what could be an otherwise crisp design. A key word to look for when buying cotton socks is mercerized. Mercerization is a textile finishing treatment that when applied to cotton results in a stronger fabric that will shrink less and have a notable silk-like luster. There are other more niche materials such as linen, rainy, silk, and cashmere. However, cotton and wool will compose most of what you'll find. A quick side note, wool is not superior to cotton. This idea primarily exists because most cheap socks that aren't made entirely of polyester are made of cotton. However, just because all cheap socks are made of cotton does not mean all cotton socks are cheap. Cotton comes in a variety of different grades, as does overall sock design and construction, which means it may be inferior, equal, or superior to wool, depending on the sock. Once you're in the realm of high quality socks, wool or cotton should factor into your sock buying decisions only insofar as the materials have different feel and functionality.
Most socks will have between 20 and 30% of a secondary elastic material, such as elastane, nylon, or some other polyamide, which will be primarily concentrated in the cuff, heel, and toe. This is one of the few exceptions in menswear where the presence of polyamides in high-grade products is okay, if not preferable. They allow for better fit and help grip your calf to prevent sliding. It's particularly important for sheer thin socks as it also adds strength and durability to the fabric. Now, if you have an allergy to synthetic material or simply prefer all natural, 100% natural fiber socks are available. However, they tend to be thicker and more sensitive to fit and sizing due to lower elasticity. The fourth and final consideration when buying socks is price. Price will vary with quality though, the most bang for your buck will be in that 20 to $35 range. Everything in this price range will generally have a flush toe seam, high needle count, and high quality materials. Below $20 and the sock may be cheaply made, which will translate into being uncomfortable, itchy, and fast to fall apart. And above $35, you really need something to justify the price of the sock. Most often this is a novel material such as cashmere or silk. With more objective considerations out of the way, let's talk patterns and color. Much like any clothing item, dress socks have their own range of formats varying from fun and outgoing to muted and austere. On the casual end, you have the more playful horizontal stripe sprinkles and polka dots, and on the formal end, you have more subtle ribbing and micro squares. In the middle is where you have the most and most versatile options to play with and contain some of my personal favorite patterns. Here you have your classic paisley, herringbone, chevron, diamond, argyle, and vertical stripes. When storing your dress socks, don't do this. These are my everyday socks. I got them off Amazon. I think it was 40 pairs for a dollar, but doing this will ruin the elastics on your dress socks. Instead, softly roll them up or fold them and place them somewhere where they won't get squished. Bear in mind, while you can be more liberal with socks than most other articles of clothing, you can still go overboard with it. Be careful when it comes to those more casual patterns. These patterns already have such a strong Dr. Seuss quality to them that they can very easily go from tastefully expressive to Toys R Us. An example that illustrates this is these socks. These have three colors, highly contrasting and densely packed together. It's just a lot. On the other hand, these socks also have three colors, but the pattern is less dense and the black blends in very nicely with the maroon and navy, allowing the lovely white patterning to be the focal point of attention. The bold pattern is balanced by a restrained color palette, resulting in a casual look that's expressive without being annoying. For bright, bold colors, try balancing them with a more conservative pattern like vertical stripes or paisley. So that's everything to consider when buying socks. Now, from where do you buy them? Ideally, you want to buy from a company that directly designs and manufactures the sock. This will result in the highest quality to price ratio as you're cutting out the additional cost of a middleman retailer. There only seems to be a small handful of companies within this category that are accessible to shop online and deliver internationally. Most notably, you have Corgi and Pantherella in the UK. Both are legacy companies with reputations for great quality. Pantherella has more formal options, though they will be a little bit pricey. Bresciani in Italy, ranging from $25 to $30 and offering 100% natural fiber. Pedemia in Portugal. This company is particularly notable for having a great value. Their socks are only around $10 a pair and not too far from the others in terms of quality. Falk in Germany. I'll mention Falk here, though they just seem a little bit over- Tabio in Japan. They don't have many options, but they are hand-linked and do offer free US shipping for orders over $30. In my experience, Japanese craftsmanship tends to be among the best in the world, so they may be worth checking out. Boardroom socks in the US, this is another notable exception to the $20 to $35 rule. They're good for anyone in the US that is just starting out buying dress socks. They have free shipping and a generous return policy, and while they are a tad thicker than ideal, $18 for a flesh toe seam sock is nothing to shake a stick at. So at this point in the video, you may be thinking, Chris, that's all well and good, but my budget was closer to $1,275 for one pair of socks made from the super fine down of the very rare New Zealand red deer that measures 13 microns thin, finer than the finest cashmere in the world. Lastly, a small company in France, Mechaussette Rouge. They are a retailer, but get an honorable mention because they have a variety of offerings from Italian companies that you would not be able to get otherwise unless you actually traveled to Italy. 
and all for very reasonable prices. While all these companies have great construction and materials, as far as designs go, you won't find much of a difference. They'll all have your plain solids and some variations of basic patterns. Then you have Il Regal. These are my favorite socks. I love these socks. I have made the clear and concrete decision not to bear children, but instead to buy more of these socks. Cotton, wool, silk, ramy, they've got herringbone, different types of paisley, they've got different types of vertical reversible striped socks. You get two socks in one sock. They're hand linked. They're sheer thin. The cotton is mercerized. They have got such a high quality and so many options that I've been unable to find anywhere else. Yes, you can get paisley socks elsewhere, but even if those socks are well made, the paisley design is just printed on. These socks, it's physically sewn into the sock. It has a texture, it's incredible. Look at this herringbone! And they're only 20 to $30 a pair. Yes, you'll have to pay international shipping and that'll bump up the price a little bit. But the point I wanna make is that these are really special and worth paying a little extra for. Plus, they run sales occasionally for some percent off or free shipping, so you can save some money there. I'm not sponsored by Il Regalo. I'm not affiliated with them anyway. I've never even gotten free stuff from them. It's just that I don't know of any other company producing this type of product for such a reasonable price. And they come with this origami swan. Do you see this swan? Look at it. So bottom line, if you're new to buying dress socks, maybe buy from a regional company that has free shipping and a generous return policy. Then when you're more comfortable, you can consider international companies that may have more options or better value. Laundry, ideally hand wash. Realistically though, cold wash inside out on a delicate cycle with a mild detergent. And try these laundry bags too. They'll help protect your socks during the wash cycle and hang dry. I know it's annoying, but a dryer will shrink your socks and reduce their lifespan, if not outright damage them. We're gonna talk styling now. But first, while I know you may be tempted to stick with dark neutral colors, because the last thing anyone wants is to walk into a room and- You need to stop it. Oh! This needs to stop now. Ew, I'm gonna call this What the fuck? Allow me to make a case for why you should experiment. If people are noticing your socks, it means you've already probably been hanging out with them for a while, which means you've already made your first impression. People won't judge you on your socks the way they will your tie and pocket square. While dark neutral socks won't hurt you, well-designed pattern socks will add a personable quality and charm to your outfits that communicates to people that A, you actually have a personality and are not merely a suit. B, that personality is of someone who's confident enough in themselves to be adventurous and creative while still remaining C, thoughtful and considerate of design and quality and not just being loud for the sake of attracting attention. And people will gravitate towards that. They will remember you because that's what it fundamentally means to have style. So how do we style these? Well, that's the fun part. On top of what we just talked about, these Il Regalo socks are so remarkable in their color and design that they very well stand up on their own. You need not fret over the details the way you might a tie or pocket square. You can kind of just do whatever you want. Nonetheless, if you would like more specific guidelines on where to start, there are a few rules of thumb that you may find helpful. Number one, matching colors will always be safest. When I first started with these socks, I got navy paisley socks because I had a navy suit. You could hardly notice them and it just made me feel less anxious to start subtle. You could also try matching the colors of your tie or shoes to be a little bit more adventurous. Number two, match darks and lights. If you're feeling nervous about mixing colors but want to explore a little bit, Know that as long as you match dark socks with dark outfits and light socks with light outfits, you will look cohesive. Number three, on the subject of lights, light colored socks, white socks are okay. In fact, they look quite elegant, but you have to pair them right. They can work with dark outfits, though if you wanna play it safe, use light socks with light colored outfits. If you're new to styling light colored socks, a good rule of thumb is, would this outfit still make sense without socks? If the answer is no, probably safer to stick with a darker shade. And for this reason, suede loafers tend to pair very well with light socks. Some more subtle ideas could be matching herringbone socks with a herringbone jacket, or paisley socks with a paisley tie or lining. If you have any doubt about the versatility of these socks or simply wanna see them in action, I highly recommend you check out the Instagram page that introduced me to them, at OutBespoken. I love his work. He's got great style. Now, guys, Use your judgment. 
Don't wear your white and hot pink vertical reversible striped socks to grandma's funeral. Don't wear your banana yellow paisley socks to your bankruptcy hearing. Don't wear dress socks to the pool party. Okay, but the point I wanna make is have fun with it. Classic menswear is notorious for being restrictive and unforgiving. Yes, you can be expressive, but given the settings in which you wear this stuff, you're probably not gonna risk a major style snafu just so you can try on a new tie. And you're probably not gonna drop $500 on a new pair of shoes just so you can feel a little zesty in the office. And that's why socks are great. They're not very noticeable, they're not very expensive, and it's really hard to mess them up. So get zesty with them. I personally get a lot of satisfaction from wearing my Il Regalo socks. Is it weird that as an adult man, I derive my joy from wearing dress socks? Yeah, it's weird. But if all it takes to make me happy is wearing a well-made, hand-linked $25 Japanese dress sock, then I'm fine with that. And you should be too.